Recently, I've started noticing something in a lot of the apps that I've been testing at work. This is something that's been around for a while, but for whatever reason, I've just been noticing a lot more often in some of the apps that I've been seeing. The thing I'm talking about is JSON Web Tokens, also known as JWTs. If you don't know what JWTs are, they're basically just strings of encoded text that include some information about the user that is used to talk to the server. This can include things like your username and different role information and things that do with your session. And a lot of apps have started using JWTs as basically the only form of session management in their applications. And a lot of times people will put some information in those JWTs that is sensitive or they might be handling them wrong. Since I've been seeing these JWTs so often lately, I wanted to make a video about JWT attacks. So I decided to go back to our old friend, the Portswigger Web Security Academy. I made a few videos a while back solving some of the labs in the Web Security Academy, but they have a whole section about JWT attacks and they have several different labs about different types of attacks that you can try. So I thought I would solve the first JWT lab that they have, which is JWT authentication bypass via unverified signature. Before I get started on the lab, I just wanted to point out one thing that might be helpful for anyone that's wanting to do these kind of JWT attacks using Burp Suite. There's an extension you can find in the B app store called JWT editor that makes working with JSON web tokens a lot easier. There are a lot of other extensions out there too. You can feel free to try any of those you want, but this is just one that I've found that I like and you don't need Burp Suite Pro or anything to get it. You can just get it for the community edition if you're not paying for a license or anything like that. Just click on the name of the extension and then there should be an install button over here down in the bottom right. So getting back to the lab, it says in the instructions, this lab uses a JWT based mechanism for handling sessions. Due to implementation flaws, the server doesn't verify the signature of any JWTs that it receives. To solve the lab, modify your session token to gain access to the admin panel at slash admin, then delete the user Carlos. And it also gives you your user credentials that you're gonna use to log in to your user account. So I'm going to click on access the lab and I'm actually going to open it in another tab just in case I need to refer back to these instructions for anything. And just by the way, I noticed that since the last time I used the Web Security Academy, they have made a change to like the format of the website where they had this whole section over here on the left side that has all these links to everything about the topic you're talking about, which is very convenient if you ever want to look into some of the documentation about how some of these attacks works. It's great to have that link there, but I really don't like having this big blue box in the left side of my screen. I feel like it makes the spacing of the whole site feel weird. I wish you could like click a button to collapse it over into like a little border on the side or something, but I'm not a web designer. What do I know? Anyway, let's get started on the lab. Once we click that button, it's going to open up this little page that has this blog and I'm actually going to copy that URL and I'm going to go to burp suite and I'm going to open it in burp so I can mess with the requests. So I'm going to the proxy and I'm going to open browser. And then I'm going to paste that URL into the browser. Now we have our blog and we also have the request going through our proxy. So I'm going to click on my account and now we have a login page where we're going to log into our user credentials that they gave us in the instructions. And if we look back at the instructions one more time, it says that to solve the lab, we need to modify the session token to gain access to the admin portal. So since our goal is to get to the admin portal, I'm going to go to the URL and put in slash admin to the URL that we want to go to. And when we do that, we see that it says admin interface only available if logged in as an administrator. So now we need to see if we can mess with that JWT to trick the app into thinking that we are an administrator. So I'm going to take this request that we just made to go to slash admin and I'm going to right click it and send to repeater. So now that we have our request in the repeater, we can click on the JSON web token tab and we can take a look at the contents of our JWT and we see that it has a sub field and it has the username that we use to log in. And because the website told us that the admin interface is only available if you're logged in as an administrator, I'm going to try changing that username from ours to administrator. Now that I have that JWT changed, I'm going to send that request. This time, instead of getting an unauthorized response, now we actually get into the admin panel because we changed that field inside our JWT. And if we look back at the instructions in the lab one more time, it says to solve the lab, we had to gain access to the admin portal, which we already did. And then you also have to delete the user Carlos. And if you look back at our admin portal that we have access to now, it has a list of the two user accounts and we see that Carlos is there and it has a delete button next to his name. 
And if we look through the HTML code, we see that the actual URL required to send that delete request is going to be slash admin slash delete and then the username. So we can just copy that URL and replace it in our request here. And now we can send that request to delete Carlos. And when we send that request, we get a 302 found and we can follow the redirection. And now if we render, user deleted successfully and congratulations, you solved the lab. I know this was a very simple lab, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about JWTs and how you can inspect them with Burp Suite and what are some of the kind of things you can look for if you happen to see them in any of the apps that you're working with. I might end up doing another video about JWTs and go over one of the more complicated labs in the Web Security Academy. So if this topic interests you and you'd be interested in seeing another one of these, then let me know in the comments and I'll probably end up doing one pretty soon.